You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. Say hello to the Xbox Core Controller, which was released alongside the Xbox Series consoles on November 10th of this year. At first glance while purchasing this thing, it seems pretty similar to the last generation's Xbox One controller, just with some of the glossy accents changed to match the matte look of the rest of the controller, and the D-pad now having a full circle of 8 directions instead of just 4, and otherwise it looks pretty much the same. FYI, if you're looking to buy this controller too, then you can find links to this controller and some accessories in the video description. Upon unboxing the controller, it seems my initial impressions hold true. It is very similar to the Xbox One controller, although it does look a lot cleaner without the glossy bits. The pictures really do not do it justice. Holding it in my hands, it does seem a little slimmer, although I can't tell exactly if it is smaller, and I really don't feel like it's worth measuring it, but if you look at it top down, side to side, the Xbox Core controller does seem a little bit slim. What's this? There's this grippy-ish texture on the back of the Core controller, where you would hold it, which wasn't on the Xbox One controller, and yeah, that's, that's a nice touch. As I mentioned earlier, the controls are pretty much the same as before, although we do get this cute little share button, which I actually missed when I first looked at the controller, and I guess it's useful if you want to share something from your Xbox, although I'm not sure if I would ever use it. I'm sure someone will find a use for it. The buttons as a whole feel a bit crisper on the core controller, although that could just be due to my Xbox One controller's buttons being a bit worse for wear. And the bumpy and the bumpers do feel a little bit less crunchy and a bit easier to press. Moving on to the connectivity of the controller, the headset port is the same as before, at least as far as I can tell, and they added a 3.5mm jack as well, so that's kind of nice. And on the top of the controller, there is now a USB-C port instead of a micro USB port. This does mean you will need to replace or at least adapt any accessories you've bought that use the micro USB port on the last model. But in my opinion, this is a great improvement. I've had too many micro USB connectors over the years just outright break, and I'm glad USB-C is becoming more common and is now featured on this controller. If you're looking to use this controller on your computer, it connects the exact same way as before, either via a USB cable, the Xbox official USB wireless adapter, or via Bluetooth, which I recently learned is apparently a feature on a later revision of the Xbox One controllers. Steam has already added Xbox controller support to their drivers, so everything should work as expected once connected to your computer, as long as you're up to date. If you're not using Steam, you may need to do some extra work and research into drivers and game support, but really that's the same case as with any other controller. With this new console launch and the associated accessories with it, Microsoft has made a huge deal in regards to backwards and forwards compatibility with the games and accessories, which means you can use your new controllers on your old console and your old controllers on your new console, plus playing games on both platforms. But this all begs the question, is it worth purchasing all new controllers, or should you just use your old ones? Like I said before, the core controllers are very, very similar to the Xbox One controllers. And unless you really, really want to take advantage of the new D-pad or the share button, there really isn't a point to upgrading all your controllers right away. You can buy new core controllers when your old ones give up the ghost, and this will save you a little bit of upfront cost, which you can then use to buy more games or simply just save it for later for other things. You can see this as Microsoft doing good for the consumers or whatever, but this was a really smart move by Microsoft. Not only will it make their customers a little happier to spend a little less, but it will also make it a little easier to spread adoption of the new consoles. Since the price of the extra controllers is never really discussed on console launches, our new Mega Extreme Shark Blaster Generation 3xK console only costs $400, plus another $150 if you want controllers to play with your family at home. Doesn't really seem too appealing if you ask me. This all makes me believe that Microsoft is positioning themselves more to make their money off of online sales, and less by pushing as much hardware as physically possible. With hardware sales, you have to worry about costs related to manufacturing, shipping and warehousing the finished products, 
And then with defects in regards to waste of material and RMA costs, whereas with online sales, you can cut all that out at the cost of some extra bandwidth. Plus, I can almost guarantee it would have been a major feces festival if Microsoft forced you to replace all of your controllers with basically the same controller with a little bit of a lipstick on it, figuratively speaking. Moving off of the theoretical stuff, I personally really like this move since it makes it just a little bit easier to transition to one of the new consoles. Although, that being said, I am not that much of a console user myself, and since the Xbox Series consoles aren't that much different from an Xbox One, I probably won't be buying one, but that's beside the point. Anyway, getting back to the controller, overall, the new Core controller is basically just an updated Xbox One controller. It looks a little more modern with some updated I.O. and it features the same button layout that Xbox users have enjoyed for a few generations now. It's a nice controller, although you really shouldn't run out and replace your current controllers immediately since it really doesn't offer too much new compared to the old controllers. By the way, keep an eye out on my channel for future videos since I will be doing an overview video for the PS5 controller in a similar style to this one. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. That's actually going to wrap it up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you'll like the video, subscribe to the channel, watch one of the videos down below, or just do whatever it is you need to do to make yourself feel happy. Either way, I will catch you in the next one.